Right, you guys, got another video here for you. In this one, we're going to be adding uh, portable apps to our Win Builder build or Win PE build that we built using Win Builder. And uh, if you haven't watched that first one of the series, then check out the link above the video and you can watch that and it'll show you how to do it. Now, I have made other videos on uh, product reviews, guys, but you guys ain't watching them. So uh, can you please show a bit of love and go over there and just give it a thumbs up and watch those videos because it helps me out quite a lot. And, uh, and I'll be making more content like this as well in the future. It just inspires me to do more. So anyway, let's continue with the Wind Builder uh, build and a series that we're doing here. So go into C Drive here and go into where you see Windows 10 and WinPE. If you don't know how to do this, we've already done a video on that, so you can watch the previous version of that and the link will be up above. So as long as you've got all this set up how you had it in the first video, then you're pretty much good to go. So we're going to go into here and click on builder.se.exe and this will open up our Windows 10 PE SE project that uh, Chris R created. And you can see here, we're just going to come straight down to uh, where it says apps here. Open this up and you'll see the portable area here. And we're going to be pulling that open as well. And you can see PSTAR and PAPS. Click on this part here, and uh, what this is going to do is going to allow us to add in some portable apps here. Now you can see they've already put in Explorer++ there, just to give you an example, and that helps you out quite a lot, because it gives you an idea of what to do. But it is a bit vague, so I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to do it. Now you can see Add Desktop Shortcuts. This will add PSTART to your desktop. If you want to do that, you can put that tick in there. So let's go ahead and add in some applications. And you can see here we've got directory of apps, name of executable, and so on inside here. So I've got my portable apps here, as you can see. These are all uh, the portable apps that we're going to be using in this build. So what we're going to do here next is open up the open source folder here. And uh, we can add them in uh, one at a time. So open source folder here will take us to the source folder where we need to put in our portable apps into. So just open this. And you can see it's got the Explorer++ in here and the pstart.executable file, uh, which it needs to run. So open up your portable apps folder and then copy in the portable apps that you want to use in your build. Now, I'm just going to be doing about three here just to show you because uh, it takes quite a long time. Uh, but, uh, but we're going to click on these ones here, copy these, and I'm going to paste them into this area here. Okay, so they're all in location now. What we need to do is right click uh, the uh, Red Shot uh, portable app uh, and then copy that file. Now, if you can't see the executable extension, go to view and then go options and then click on the view tab here and then show uh, hidden extensions for known file types is make sure the tick is removed. and You should see that extension file type here. So what we're gonna do here is um, I've closed that off now. Let me just go back there a second. I need to go back to that location here. So let me just quickly open this location up again. So these are our files inside here. So we're going to right click and uh, rename and copy this uh, red shot portable. It's the quickest way I know rather than typing it out. So we're going to add this into the directory of apps. That's the name of the folder of the directory of what we want. The extension name is redshotportable.exe, as we've already uh, seen. Add it to the start menu. And here you can add in what you like, but I'm just going to keep it all file tasks. You can name it whatever you want here, but I'm just going to keep it all the same, just for simplicity. And uh, we're just going to add this in here. So the idea of that area is so you can have them all in categories, i.e. Uh, registry programs, malware programs, and so on, but I'm just going to keep it all the same. Now we need to put in the paste in the actual red shot portable here, and this is the shortcut. And you can leave a, a, a little tick on the uh, desktop there if you want to do that as well. Now that's how you basically do that part. Now, what we need to do here is go into that folder again, which is our portable area for P start, as you can see here. There is the file. So what we want to do next is back up and add in 
the P start into, into the uh, shortcut into P start now. So go back into that location here and back up to where it says P start. There we go. Right into this location. And look at the path. That's the important part. That's where we need to be working. So we're going to go into the pstart.exe, open this up, and then we want to go up to where it says uh, edit. And you can see the Explorer++ Plus Plus has already been added in. So we now need to physically add in a file, and it's going to be our RedShot Portable, what we're going to go into here. So just go into RedShot Portable. Pretty straightforward once you get used to doing these types of things. So open this up and then click on the redshotportable.exe and then click open. And you can fill in all this information here if you wish and give it whatever stuff you want to do. I'm just going to click on OK because all that interests me is that the program opens up and uh, I get access to it and I can use it. So what we're going to do here is click on OK here. And now that has been added into our PSTART program. And we already got the shortcuts all added in on the actual program there. So don't close it off, leave it open, and we're going to now add in License Crawler or whatever portable app you're going to be adding in. So we can rename and copy the actual uh, directory, like so. Rename, copy the directory folder. Go into your WinBuilder portable apps area here and paste that directory of names in, and also the executable name I try to keep them the same because it's quicker to add them in so rather than having obscure uh, executable names it just makes it a lot quicker to do this so now I just check to make sure it's the exact same as you can see here license crawler.exe so we know we've got the right uh, executable file added in and now all we need to do is add a tick in the start menu if you want it in the start menu add in your start menu folder and you can call it whatever you like so I'm just going to call it file tasks again just to get this out of the way and make it nice and simple and also name a shortcut which we're just going to use license crawler and you can put a tick on there if you want it on the desktop or not now you try to keep the desktop clear a little bit because it's only a short or small window so inside here now we're going to add another one so we're going to go back to the P start area here and you can see we've got license crawler. We're going to add this into our PSTART. And there we go. We just added RedShot, Portable, and License Crawler into our PSTART program. So now what we're going to do is one more. We're going to go get data back for NTFS file system. I'm going to write, rename this and copy. Now you can type all this out if you want to. It just saves me time doing this. And uh, what we're going to do here is go back into our WinBuilder program and add in the directory of apps, call it that. And then again, put the .exe, just make sure that is the correct .exe file extension that you're using. And then put in file tasks or whatever you're going to be using. And again, name the shortcut. And that's it. Now we need to add this to our PSTART program. So open up PSTART. And just repeat the process until you get all the programs and portable apps that you want to use for your build. So we're just going to go into uh, get data back here. That's it. And then click open. And done. So all we need to do now is a build out ISO file. You can see these all added in. And this is how they're going to look once we uh, boot up our ISO. So what we're going to do here is close all this off and uh, create our build. So we can close off pstart, go down to the pstart part here and close it completely off. And now push play. And it will now build your ISO. It's gonna take longer than what it took here. I've just speeded that process up. And it's now creating the ISO. And that's nearly done. We can now close all this off. And of course, we could test this inside WinBuilder itself uh, in our virtual test if we wanted to. 
but I can do that in another video if you want to learn how to do that. Let me know what else you want to see with Wind Builder, and I can make those videos for you, so you can completely build your own Wind PEs how you like them. So this is booting up to our Wind PE now. I'm going to just select Win 10 PE SE and boot up to our ISO or USB flash drive. In the, in this case, it's an ISO because I'm on a virtual machine, but yours will be a and either CD or an ISO. It's about 600 odd megabytes in size. So we just let this load in. And these are handy if you want to fix PCs, you want to do data recovery or whatever you want to do, malware removal, all that sort of good stuff with WinPEs. And there we go, it's just detecting our network. It's found my network card and it's now giving us the network. And you can see the P start down on the bottom here, click on P start here, and lo and behold, there's our programs we just added. And now we can click on these and they will open in a live environment or pre installed environment, as you can see here. Click OK. So now it's out of date because I'm using an older version, but it's OK. Click Accept. And click Yes. And boom, there we go. Done. And again, we're going to just try one more here at Red Shot. And if you wanted to try the get data back here, we can try that also if you want to. Now they're not showing up on the desktop. I don't know why that's happened. I need to investigate that. But that's for another video. But we can click on get data back here. And of course that works as well, as you can see here. Perfectly fine. Now I can recover data from the hard drive. Uh, that I've booted up to as long as I've got an external drive plugged in to save the data to, them, uh, to and uh, we should be pretty much good to go. Anyway, I hope you enjoy these videos, guys. If you do, let me know in the comment section below what else you want to see, and I shall make those videos for you. Have a great weekend, and thanks again for watching. Bye for now.